Okay, so today we'll be uh, actually discussing two two chapters because uh, the the ninth the chapter no number nine is is quite short. It just builds a. Uh, it relies heavily uh, on what we have discussed last time, which is after you have your graph objects, uh, how to measure a few features of this network, which today we'll be talking only about one, which is the density. Yeah? So uh, we'll talk about what is how to measure the density of, the density of a graph. And to do this, we'll have to load some data. So uh, I will just run the code from last uh, meeting. So we had some data. I, I will quickly introduce the data. So last time we were talking about uh, this data where uh, we have a large number of rows, like around 750 rows, and each row represents one person. And that person would, uh, would recall the closest persons to this person, to that person, and say whether these persons have uh, connections to each other or not. So for example, here we have for the first row, we have someone that reported that uh, the closest person, the closest two persons to that person are connected, but uh, person number one and person number four that are close to that person are not connected. And also person number one and person number five that are close to that person are not connected. Yeah, so uh, this is the data that we're working on. And based on this data, we're trying to make uh, a graph for each person. This is the ego network uh, about uh, the people that are close to that person. And to do this, we took this uh, table and we uh, there was, uh, there was a, like a function to extract from each row an ego network. And then here we can uh, use apply to get apply for each row of this matrix, the function, and we can select the first uh, network to have a look on it. So this is the first row, and this is the first network, and we can quickly look at the plot for this network. So as I've said, like this is uh, like these are five persons that are close to the first row, and we can see that in this uh, network, person number two and person number three are connected, uh, but all of them are connected to each other, but one and four are not connected to each other. Yeah. So with this network, what can we learn? So the first thing that we'll talk about today is the number of uh, vertices. Uh, it's easy to do this here by eye, just to look at the network and say how many vertices you have. But to do this for large networks, you can do it visually. So to do this, we we'll use a function called vcount, vertices count, from iGraph. And for this, uh, we will look at this uh, this fun this uh, graph. So here, I've uh, I will apply to all the graphs that I have, and just maybe let's look on the first of them. So here, uh, I applied it to the whole list of graphs. So these are the, all the all the rows from the matrix that I have just shown. And based on this function, we can see that for for example, for the first a network which we are looking at here it has four vertices uh, for the second one it has also four for the third one it has five vertices so here we can look at the nodes the vertices and using vcount we get 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 an idea about the number in the graph uh, to to look at the average because in this data we were looking we were looking at a large number of individuals and we were interested in uh, how many persons do each of these uh, does each of these uh, people know so we can do get the the number of vertices for all the rows and then take the average for example to summarize the the average number of of vertices for each ego network so for example here we can see that the, the average is around three so each person on average knows three other person that are close to that person and because the average might not be the best measure based on the distribution of the data, so it's always good to look at the histogram. So here, this is the histogram. So we, it, it's not surprising that the data is discrete because here we're looking at the number of persons. So we're looking at discrete number. And here we have uh, here two, uh, the, each column here represents the, the number of 
uh, yeah, it represents the number of vertices for the ego networks that we have looked at. So we can see that the majority of not the majority because it's the difference is not that big, but we can see that the the largest number of uh, individuals reported that they only knew two, and this was followed by three, and the lowest was the people that they said that they knew they knew they knew four. Uh, so this can give you an idea about if you're looking at many networks at the same time and you would like to look at the size of this network. So we, you, can, uh, you can take the number of nodes as the size of a network. Um, yeah, so this is it for the number of nodes. But after looking at the number of nodes, we were interested in looking at the density of the connections or the, the density of the network in general. And to do this, we have to shift our focus from nodes to look at the edges. So for example, here, we can see that in this plot, uh, in this uh, graph, uh, things are, one is connected to two and three, but it's not connected to four. Uh, four is connected uh, and two is connected to one and three and four connected to everything else, yeah? So I don't know, would you say that this is dense uh, graph or not? Maybe it is, but in order to compare it, you'll have to compare it to a reference. And the reference to measure the density of a network is a fully connected network, yeah? So you will need to think of this, oh, how would you compare this the connections now compared to what the graph would look like if everything was connected to everything? So you would see that a fully connected graph compared to this graph is only lacking one, uh, one connection, one link here. So I would say that actually th this one is, is, is dense, yeah? It's only lacking one edge compared to the all the possible connections. So uh, in the second section, we'll start to look uh, at the number of edges. So previously we used V count to look at the number of vertices. And here we would look at the number of edges. So we'd use E count. It's also from I graph. So we'll apply this to all the, all the ego networks. And here I use, this object is a list because I use lapply, but then I use unlist to make it a vector. So we can actually quickly look at this. Uh, sorry. So this is a list, but now after I use unlist, I make it a vector, a numeric vector, okay? And again, we will look at the distribution, but this time not the distribution of the number of vectors, a number of vertices, sorry, the number of nodes, but we'll look at the distribution of the number of edges. Uh, and we can see here that uh, the number of edges is up to, you have like up to 10 connections. So this would be, uh, this has to be, at least five persons in this network, right? So for example, yeah, I think that if you have four persons, yeah, the, the number would be lower than this. But anyway, as you can see here that it's a, it has a heavy tail, the distribution has, uh, has a heavy tail to the right. So this means that the majority of the, of the number of edges are on the lower end between uh, one and three. So these are the majority, but then we have lower and lower number that have higher than this. Uh, so on one end, on the right, we'll have the highly dense networks. And on the left, we'll have the sparse networks. So these are the networks, which uh, actually we can't say this because we don't know how, maybe this was a network with only two people. And then if you have one edge, it will be already a dense network. So I, I I will take it back. So I think that we need first to know the the number of nodes to say whether you have a dense network or not. We can just look at the distribution unless uh, you have maintained the same number of uh, vertices, the same number of nodes across all networks. Uh, but yeah, so now we looked at the distribution of networks and uh, the distribution of nodes and also the distribution of the edges. Uh, and now to look at the density, what we do is we will take the, the number of the, so this, I will take an example. I will call it a random ego network. So here, 
This is an iGraph object, so I took one network. And for this network, I would like to get the number of edges. So I use E count, and I will divide this by the, the multiplication of the number of vertices and the number of vertices. Um, yeah, so this. Yeah, and the number of vertices minus one. So basically this number would give us all the possible connections. So this is, uh, in mathematics, I think this is uh, enumeration. So if you are looking at the, I think, combina combi combinatorics, I think this would be enumeration. So this would be the number of unique edges that you can get giving the, a set. So if you have a set, and this set here would represent the number of nodes that we have, uh, so we the size of the set here are, is four. So the enumeration of four, I think this would give you six, if I'm not mistaken. So we will divide the, the number of edges we have, which are five, and divide it by six, which is all the possible number of connections, and we will get 1 point, uh, 1 point 1.8. So still with this number, it, you can have a better idea. Because I made a mistake when I was trying to explain this figure that I said, oh, on one end, we have the, the dense networks on the left, on, on the right. And then on the left, we have the sparse networks. But uh, this was not the right plot to make that kind of conclusions. You, rather, you have to look at the distribution of the densities. So here I uh, showed you how to do it by hand. But uh, in iGraph, there is another function called graph density. And uh, here I will apply this function to all the networks. and look at the distribution of the networks, okay? And now we can look at the distribution of networks and say whether we have a dense network or a sparse network. And it actually goes uh, opposite to what I have uh, falsely concluded before. So you, we can see that for the majority of the, of the networks, all the people in these networks are, they, all of the people in this network know each other. Uh, and I, I have to say that for, for these networks, all the networks are not of, of the same size. So, so because people report a different number of individuals. So if someone reported that you know, only know two persons and these, per, uh, these two know each other well, they will end up here on the right. And if someone knows like five persons, but and four of them know each other, it will be lower. So it will be lower than the one that uh, only knew two. Uh, so this... Uh, this is uh, unfair. Maybe you would, to make the conclusion robust, we will need to maybe stratify the data by the size of the network. So look at the density of the networks that are of this, that, uh, that have two nodes, uh, three nodes, four nodes, and five nodes, and then do this comparison. Uh, so still, we're, after looking at the densities, you can have a better idea on the on the connection density of connection network, but because the connection the networks and our data are not of the same size, we need to stratify this data and then look again at the data. Uh, yeah, so th this is it for this short chapter. So before moving to the next one, are there any questions or any input? Okay, so. Let's move to the next one. Uh, so, so far we have been looking at a uni unipartite networks. So this by unipartite networks, or these are networks where uh, you have one group of entities, one group of nodes, and you're looking at the connections between these group of nodes. So individuals, so they are, they belong all to the same group. So in the previous data, we were looking at, uh, the results from I think it was uh, uh, it's, it was like a questionnaire and you have uh, your group of people you give them like a questionnaire and then you get responses but they all of the same group yeah but maybe you have different cases where you have students and teachers uh, you have in a in a company you have people that belong to the same group based on this the hierarchy in this company so these kind of networks uh, are not unipartite anymore because the individuals in this network 
belong to different groups. And by group here, I mean, can be different things. So anything can be a group, but you need to be able, you need to be aware of this by having the right metadata about the, the network. So this is what we'll be looking at here in this chapter. We'll be looking at the affiliation by looking at uh, two different groups. And here they are not even human. So we have individual students and we are trying to connect these students by looking at features that they share in common. So we will look at which classes they attend at university. And then we'll try to look at a bipartite graph that includes both the students and then also includes the subjects in the same graph, the classes that they attend. So this, this is also another example of a bipartite graph where you have two different types of, of nodes. Uh, so I'll start by uh, loading the, the libraries. Sorry. Okay. And so first, we'll to, uh, uh, this part, it's like about indirect connections, because if I'm trying to look for direct connections would be something that we have similar to what we've looked at previously, people that know each other directly. So there is a connection between these, uh, these people, but an indirect connection would be like guilt by association. So I attend, I go to this club and another individual goes to this club. So we are linked because we are affiliated to the same club. So we will make an example data here by uh, looking at an example of four students. And then we we'll, each of these students have three classes. So here, I, let's change this, make it inline. Okay. So this is the data that, that we'll be look that we'll be using. So we have a column called name. It has uh, so it has uh, four rows. Each row represents one student, and we have uh, three columns that represent the classes that each student attends. So the first attends biostatistics, chemistry, and uh, linear algebra. So we have three rows, uh, three three columns. And now we'll try to make a graph to explore this data. So first we'll need to take this structure. So this structure is not ready to make a graph out of it uh, because we know we either need an edge list or an adjacency matrix. So here we'll try to take this, uh, the data. It's, now it's in, in a wide format. We will try to make it in a, a long format. So to, to, to make it closer to an edge list. So to do this, we'll take the, the data, and then we'll use pivot pivot longer from uh, tidy R. And this will reshape the data from the wide format to the long format. So we still have the same information. So we have, uh, for example, let's look at the first uh, students. We have Leo, it has biostatistics, chemistry, and uh, linear algebra. And now the, the new table, it contains the same information, but it in a longer format. And this would represent the edge list. So in previous uh, meetings, we were looking at edge list where the entries were the same in two columns, yeah? So first we had individuals and then we had the same individuals and uh, we're looking at which individuals are uh, linked to each other or they, they know each other. But now we have two separate entities. We have names, we have individuals and we have classes. And this is what defines the bipartite uh, or yeah, bipartite or I think also bimodal, maybe. Okay, and now we have the edge list. Uh, we will try to convert this edge list to adjacency matrix. So I will take this data and I will use a function called flat table, which would do something very simple. Uh, let me show you. It will take this data and then it will flatten the table. So it will take these two columns, it will make them flat and we'll have the first column as rows and the second column as columns. So here we have the, the name. So we have the, uh, yeah, so we have the names. So I have Clement, Flippo, Leo and Pala on the rows. And here uh, for each subject, each of them attend, there will be one if they attend the subject and it will be zero if they don't attend the subject, okay? So this is an adjacency matrix. It looks like an adjacency matrix, but uh, when you have bipartite data, we have data that are different from each other. We call it incidence matrix. 
Yeah, so I think this is a, a new term that is introduced. So an incidence matrix looks very similar to an adjacency matrix, but here we have the names of the of the of the rows and the names of the quorum of the columns uh, that are different. So with this incidence matrix, we will uh, try to make the, the graph that we'll be looking at. So we'll use graph incidence from I graph, where I give it the, uh, the incidence matrix. And I tell the, this function to link uh, all the entries that have uh, mutual links. So we have the entries on the rows represent the students. We have the columns. Those are the, the classes. And I say like, link all the mutual edges. And this would be the, the I graph object. So this would be an I graph object. And because we will be looking at a lot of plots and I wanted to look at the plots, not using uh, I graph, but looking using GG graph because it gives better visualization and it gives you more control on the graph. I will convert it to a, a, a table graph. So, so this is another structure. So after I've uh, calc uh, after I've uh, made the used I graph to make a graph from incidence matrix, I used as table graph to convert it to a table graph. And this table graph, it maybe it looks weird because we had only one table, yeah. But now we have two tables. So the first table it has the the names. So the first table it's about the notes, and the second table is about the edges. So uh, this is, it's a, a tidy approach to looking at the, the data, yeah. So the first table, it looks at the, the nodes, we have the names and it has false and true. So this attribute is added to the data after running graph incidents. So it gives uh, the rows false and it gives the columns true, yeah. So this column was not part of our data initially, but only was uh, added to our data after running graph incidents. Uh, but for and for the edges, we can see the the edge list where uh, we can look at the rows. So, for example, here the first row it's taking the the subject number nine, subject number ten, uh, class number nine, class number ten, and class number three. And uh, now, after having the table graph of the of the data, we can use it and run the code. And this is how it would look like. Yeah. So we will have uh, in red, we will have the students. So we have Pala, Leo, Filippo, and Clement. And we can see that they are connected both to indirectly to each other. So they are first connected to the, to the classes. And then by looking at the classes, we can see how similar each one to each other. So for example, we can see that uh, Clement and Leo are very distant from one, from one another because they don't share any classes. While uh, Pala and Leo might be similar because they share one class. Uh, also, uh, if you're trying to, to interpret more, you could see that on the top part, Pala and Leo, they are taking more STEM subjects, but the Flippo and Clement, they are more in humanities. So they are taking world STEM, uh, Islamic civilization, exile data. So I think this is the, uh, so far, this is the most interesting <laughs> graph that we have looked at in the journal, in the book club. Uh, so before before going any further, uh, yeah, I would like to to have your if you have any comments or questions or just have an input or make it, make a quick discussion about this graph. Um, I think it's really interesting. Yeah, um, I was wondering um, if if it would be difficult, you know, if we are, for example, trying to make this kind of network uh, paper ready, um, we would, for example, need to change the legends to be persons and um, subjects, for example. So how would you go about that? Uh, is there an easy way to do it or would you have to go? Um, I have to say uh, you, you don't have to do it to be honest, but if, no, if it's I've late, already done it. The thing is, okay. I've already done it. Uh, mm -hmm. I've further beautified this plot. I have moved the legend inside. I have removed this A's that you can see in the legend, which, does, which doesn't make any sense, and give mm -hmm. the the entries more meaningful names. But yeah, our studio there were few hiccups with it, and I lost all of the things that I've saved. 
Oh, wow. Okay. Like, yeah, I, I think that, I, I don't know, like there were a few things that didn't work right and I had to, yeah. So I don't know, like it didn't, if I do redo. Yeah, it's, it's, it just start heartbreaking. Yeah, so for, for now I'm left with this basic, uh, <laughs> With a graph, but yeah, it, it's 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 easy one. I can share with you the code. It, it's not it's not that difficult. Okay, thank you. Good. Yeah, I, I've also I've reduced this text and I've summarized it, but I've I've lost many of the of the things. So yeah, let's let's do it in in action. Uh, so Kartik, do you have any any questions or, or comments or? No, right now sounds great. Um, okay, awesome. Picking up. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, so, so so far we had this. Uh, we started with uh, data about that had uh, two pieces of information. So we had uh, individuals and we had the uh, classes. Yeah, and from this we had the incidence matrix, and from the incidence matrix we plotted this bipartite graph. Uh, and now the what is the 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 following section is the interesting part where you are trying to move from this bipartite graph because maybe it it doesn't make uh, a lot of sense or maybe you would like to uh, summarize the connection so we're talking about indirect connections we would like to look at uh, these connections in a more direct way so we'd like to look only on the individuals and how they are connected based on the subclasses that they attend or maybe you also like to look at the classes and look on oh how for based on only on the individuals that attend those classes uh, how similar are these classes yeah so to do this we need to take our data the incidence matrix and convert it to an adjacency matrix so a matrix that is has only one group so an adjacency matrix about the individuals the students and another adjacency matrix about the uh, the subjects so to do this, uh, yeah, this year a lot of text, a lot of text, a lot of text. So the only interesting part here is, yeah, we'll take a look at this. So the first way to do it is to use a function from, uh, from iGraph called pipartite projection. So to do this, we'll take the code that we have used previously yeah so take this code so this is the code that we have used to define the the piper tad graph and we will uh yeah so So what I did here is that I took the first part, we have already looked at it. So this is the part that gives you the pipartite uh, graph. But then if you use the pipartite projection, it will give you the projection of the individual parts, the indi part of the individuals and the part of the, of the classes. So let's look at it together. So when you run this, you will see that the, the returned object has two, is a list actually, yeah? So this list has projection one, which is the projection of the individuals. So as you can see here, it's only connections between the individuals. Yeah. And here, compared to the Piper Tad graph, if you look at the individual, you could see that individuals are connected to classes. So they are all, each individual is connected to classes. Uh, and this is what we also see here, but I'm trying to get you familiar with the, with the object itself. But when we look at the Piper, Piper Tad projection, it the default is to look at uh, both the the columns and the rows so it project the rows in our case these are the individuals the students and also it projects the the classes so here we see biostatistics are connected to chemistry uh, we can see that calculus one connected to calculus two we can see that uh, linear al algebra connected to calculus two so these are the what do i mean by projection uh, if you don't need both of them, you can actually look at uh, the arguments, which uh, are your, I really encourage you to do. So if you look at the arguments, you can see there is an argument called which. Yeah. And here, the default is to do both. 
So this is the default argument. But if you if we maybe look at the document documentation of this function. Let's run this part of the code. You can see that here, this is the, the documentation of this function. You can see that for which uh, you it can be both, where this is the default, it's the first choice here, but it can be true or false. Remember, I told you when you run the, let's go back here to the code. I told you when you run the graph incidents, there is a column that is added called type, the one that is added here. Yeah, so this column, uh, the Piper type projection function uses these columns to define the two projections. So here, if I only want to look at the students, I can say it's, is, yeah, true. I just wanted to see if it's uppercase or lowercase, true. And I expect this to be the classes connected. Yeah, so this is the projection only of the classes. You can use false. And then it will give you the projection of the individuals. And again, by projection, uh, it's the connections between the individuals based on the shared affiliations that they have, okay? So this is one way to look at, to project the bipartite data into one of the underlying groups that make this bipartite graph. Uh, but the other way is to just use matrix multiplication. So in matrix multiplication, you can uh, take the matrix. So this is the incidence matrix that we had. And what we will do is we will multiply the matrix by the transpose. So we'll do a dot product between the two matrices. And because we will, the transpose of this matrix, it will be also, it will be this one. And for the inner product, you must take one row and then you multiply it by the column and you sum it. The product would look like this. Yeah. So it will be the here, for example, it's, it's expected that the because each of them attended three classes. And when you have two vectors that are uh, so if, if you have a vector that represents one individual, and you multiply this vector by itself and then sum all the entries, you will have uh, one multiplied by one, it will be one, and zero multiplied by zero, it will be zero. When you sum it, it will give you three. And if you multiply a vector that represents one individual with another individual that attend the same classes, you can get uh, either three if they attend the same classes, or it can be two or zero if they don't attend anything in common, okay? So this is the, the other way to get the, to project the, the incidence matrix into an adjacency matrix. Uh, here I've added uh, yeah, a note on how to, about matrix multiplication. As I've said, like you take the rows and then you multiply it by, by the columns. Uh, I had also two more, <laughs> two more pick, uh, figures, but yeah, I, I lost few of them. But anyway, uh, so now we have, we have this adjacency matrix, and can, as you can see, that it uh, the diagonal here. We're not interested in the diagonal because it just tell you how many number of classes was taken. Yeah, so we can just save this into this object, and then just set the the diagonal to zero. Yeah, so because the same person is not connected to to the same person. Yeah, it's it's not cyclic in the graph. You don't need to. It, it wouldn't add anything, and it doesn't make a lot of sense. And with this adjacency matrix, we'll do what we have done many times in previous meeting. We'll use graph adjacency from iGraph. It's an undirected graph. And then we will get the iGraph object. And based on this, we can actually look at this now and then go back and look at here. Yeah, so here, this is how we did it using the iGraph option without matrix multiplication. And yeah, you will have to look deeper. So I, I was just like, Look here, it, it, looks, it looks good. And here, I think it's, it's the same edges, yeah. Uh, and then we'll try to plot the data. And here we can see that Clement and Flipo are connected to each other uh, based on the affiliation. We can see that, uh, yeah, there is like Leo and Pilla are not, are not connected at all to Clement. Uh, but why is this the case? Maybe 
now it's it's as as a researcher you, what you would do is you go back here and maybe you try to explain it that ah this is the Clement is from humanities and Pala and Leo they are one from Morstem but Flipu is taking a linear algebra because he wants he I think he uh, wants to study uh, modern world systems but because of the system uh, is also taking a class on social networks so he's connecting these uh, two cultures yeah, let's say yeah uh, but we, we to summarize what we see here, we can project the data from bipartite to unipartite and look at it like here. And because I don't like the plotting from uh, iGraph, let's use the same approach here and look at the a unipartite graph, but from ggGraph. Yeah. So. Here, so what we need to do is to have a table, a table graph. So we already have the iGraph object. I will take iGraph object. Let's add it here, and then there's as table graph. Yeah, we don't have any, yeah, the labels, we keep the names, but we, I will delete the fill. Let's see, oh, okay. So this is how it looks right now, yeah? So it's just the same network, but it's it's more beautiful. It's, this is the iGraph version. This is the, the ggGraph version, okay? So this is the first, the first uh, half of the projection, looking at the projection of the individuals. But we can do the same thing and look, instead of the persons, we look at the, the groups. So here, uh, I'll take the, the sorry, I'll take the, the matrix, and then we try first transpose the matrix and then put the trans transposed matrix on the left and before before the multiplication. And now when we do this, we multiply the, the vectors of the classes to look at, oh, like uh, based on the students that attend these classes, uh, how, based on the number of students that they share, uh, attended student that they share, how similar they are. And it will return this adjacency matrix based on the groups or based on the classes. And we can do the same thing. And also let's look at the, sorry, the plot. Take this. And here I will first need to take this adjacency matrix and make replace it like this. Make a graph adjacency and make the table for the make the the graph for the classes. And now when, when you look at this class, uh, at this graph, it's clear uh, the, the separation between the two, the two cultures, the, the STEM <laughs> and the humanities, which are connected by each other using uh, by classes like social networks and the modern world system, I think because of the system link. Uh, but uh, I think that I, I will uh, maybe spend a few, few moments here because the, the, these two examples of this one, this, this graph and this, this graph, it makes you, it begs the question that you always need to ask what is the underlying data of, of, of the graph? Because for example, if you looked at this graph, you could say, ah, this, this person knows this person or they are connected by some, by some means. But actually, they are not connected at all. Like they're, they're, they're just like attending the same class, or they share the same feature, or they belong to the same club. And also here, like, a, what is this graph based on? Are this is it based on the? I don't know. What 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 is the connections here? Is this uh, departments? Do do they belong to the same department, or do they? I don't know. 
any other features, but no, it's just like the attendance of the students. So it's, a, it's a, I, I only came to appreciate, like I know that I always have to ask this question to myself, but the fact that I already started with a, a bipartite graph and then separated the two groups into two individual adjacency matrices, uh, it made it clear for me that you, uh, yeah, I always need to ask this, this question. Uh, at the beginning. It should be the first question that pops into my head when I look at the graph. What is the underlying data or what defines the link here? Is it a direct link or is it an indirect link? And because here everything is connected. So it's, and this maybe gives the impression that they are directly connected somehow, but they are not. Okay, so we started with a bipartite graph and then moved to the unipartite, projected it to unipartite, two unipartite graphs. Uh, and why we did this? Because we're trying to summarize the, yeah, we're trying to make conclusions. We're trying to make some, some summary to this figure, which can be done visually for small figure, small graphs, but you can't, it's not generalizable. So we projected it uh, further to unipartite graph. And now we, the, the, the author added and tries to try, is trying to make, take it even further by asking what would happen if you have another layer of information. So we had the students and then we had classes and this is all that defined the graph. This is why it was a bipartite graph. But what would happen if we have a tripartite network? So for example, what would be the case if we have the, the students, the classes they attend and then the, the respective department of each class? Uh, so this is what we'll try to look on here. So, it's, let me show you the data. So here we try to add a new piece of data, yeah? So this data would connect each of the classes that we have looked at so far to the departments that they belong to. So here we have like biostatistics, biostatistics belong to math, Islamic civilization belongs to history, calculus, linear algebra, and so on, belongs to math, and so on, yeah? Uh, and now we'll, what we'll need to do is to, we are trying to, we have connected the individuals, we have connected the classes. Can we also look at the departments and how they are connected to each other? Or can we, instead of using the information about the classes that the students attend, maybe we'll look at the number of classes that they take from each department. Maybe this is how we would like to interpret our data. This would give us a better interpretation. The, these are all valid questions. So to do this, we will take the uh, classes to department matrix. So this is the, the yeah. So this is the matrix that we have done here. So initially we have classes to departments and then we took classes to departments and I, we used the table function to define this matrix here. Yeah? So this is also, it's an incidence matrix. It's not an adjacency matrix, but it's not connecting individuals or students to, to classes. It's connecting the classes to the respective department. And then we will take this matrix, take the transpose and multiply it not to itself, but we will multiply it to the, the, the matrix uh, that shows the the incidence matrix of the individuals and the, the classes. So here you're multiplying two matrix where they have uh, the first part or the, the matrix on the left, it looks at the classes and the departments. And then you will multiply it by the, the matrix that has the students and the classes. So at the end, you will have a matrix that have classes and departments because the, the classes would be so it will have a matrix that have the students and the departments because the classes vector will be used for multiplication and then they will be gone. So here, this is how it looks like. So basically now we have the, the departments and the students and they are connected. So we have a bipartite graph of the students and the, and the departments based on the attendance to the classes that belong to each of these departments. And we'll do go through a very similar process. So we'll we have an incidence matrix. So we'll use graph incidence, connect people to department. So have an iGraph object. 
And then we'll try to look at the, the connection, the pipertide graph. But first let's let's do it in a more tidy and approach. So let's remove this. So yeah, here I have the, the pipertite graph between the individual, the people and the department. I convert it to a table graph and let's look at, let's lab, give the, the labels, the names and color it by the, what was it? So, so do, 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 name, it was, yeah, so the name is the type, the type column. Okay, so uh, this is the the bipartite graph of the individuals and the department. So in red we have the departments. So we can see that Clement is connected to history and sociology, and then uh, Pala, Filippo, and Leo are connected to math. But Leo is different from Pala because she's also in the chemistry department. She's taking some classes in the chemistry department, and. Uh, Flipu is connecting the two parts. Yeah, so Flipu is connected to sociology and also to math. So what I would like, to, what I want to say is that to connect Liu to Clement, you have Flipu, which is like an intermediate person, a person that they have a mutual friend, not a friend, sorry, but it's, it's mutual. So this is the, the, the person that is maybe, they attend the same class. So if, if Liu asks Flipu about Clement, they will know Clement, but they don't know each other. Uh, very well. Uh, so this is not, a, is this a tripartite graph? No, so it's not a tripartite graph. So it's also a bipartite graph, but we had, we had a tripartite data. So so it's a, a tripartite network analysis. Maybe, maybe this is what a tripartite network analysis, but we only have two types of information here. Uh, so we, we had the, the data that, uh, that may be needed to make this tripartite, and you can think about it, uh, how it would look like, for example, each uh, here in the history, you would have like further, like it would be like flowers, like you'll have leaves coming out from sociology, giving you the subjects, and you'll have math or linear algebra and things, but uh, then you would have to, it would be complicated because I can't think about how the individuals would be connected. So will they be connected to the classes and then the classes connected to the departments or they will be connected to the departments and the classes also connect to the departments. Uh, I think it's the, yeah, it's, it's the first that you can connect the individuals to the classes and then classes of the departments. But whether this would add something to the graph or not, it depends on your, uh, on the question of interest. And yeah, so I think that this was the part, last part of it. Uh, there was a lab, uh, like a question that I, I really encourage you to go through. I've already, like uh, I even try improved the code and I tried to uh, provide some answers that you can uh, look up, but it's all gone with the wind. So <laughs> yeah, uh, not my very lucky day. So yeah, that, that's it for today. So do you have any questions or comments or maybe discussions or anything? No, I enjoyed this. Um, thank you. Thank you, Karthik. The Karthik, do you, do you see how we can apply this to to immunology? Like how I'm starting to get there. Um, yeah. So I am considering having my aim to uh, focus around um, T cell receptor sequence biology, and there's a lot of like ecological methods that are used and network analysis methods that are used in, yeah. in that analysis. Um, so just kind of getting my feet wet at the moment and the edge um, node um, terminology I'm familiar with, but like how to 
connect one set of graphs to another like you showed today um, was actually what I was really interested in. So, yeah. thank you. I, I mean, uh, the, the first example that comes to my mind uh, that is related to immunology is cell-cell interaction based on single-cell RNA-seq data. So you will have maybe yeah, one. Yeah, so you'll have one cell type, we're gonna get to another cell type or uh, ligands and receptors maybe. Right. Yeah. I've seen a few packages that um, do that kind of analysis, but I haven't quite understood how they do it. So getting there. Great. So if, if, there, is, if there are no further questions, uh, yeah, I will end this meeting and uh, it was great seeing you today and see you next week. Thank yeah, you for showing up. Bye. See you. Bye-bye. Thanks. Bye.